Hey everyone, it's Mark here. This is going to be a brief introduction to the Black Shores option pricing model with a very brief summary of what that model actually is. And then we'll go over an example about how you'd use the model to price a call option. And that's essentially going to be putting numbers into a formula in order to get the price of a European call option. And they'll give us a way of pricing these things. And then we might be able to work out whether they're trading at a fair price if we observe prices in the market. Okay, so let's have a look at the Black Shoals option pricing model. Basically, this model enables us to price a European call option. So a European call option is one that enables you to purchase the underlying stock at a predetermined price on the expiration date. Now, importantly, we're looking at calls and not puts. In the put call parity theorem, which we'll get to later, we'll be pricing puts, and that will be based upon the call value that we're getting here. So the call option premium, which is the amount that you should be paying in the market, is equal to a couple of constituent components. First, we have the stock price, then we multiply that by this term called ND1. Now, basically, D1 is a variable that we'll end up determining, and ND1 is the area under the curve uh, after we calculate D1, under the curve of a unit normal distribution, that is. Now, in the second part of the equation, we have the strike price. We then discount it back using the continuously compounded risk-free rate. So this exponentiated term here, that's basically enabling us to get the present value of the strike price. We then multiply it by ND2, which again is giving us the area under the curve of a separate variable. So in this equation, we have C being the call option premium, S is the stock price, which we need. Now D1 and D2, these are both slightly complicated variables that we need to use. Now for our purposes, we're just going to take them as given. Basically, we calculate D1 and D2, and then we apply the unit normal distribution to them, and we find the area under the curve associated with D1 or D2. One would obviously do this in a, uh, in a program such as Excel, for example, which would enable you to easily calculate ND1 and ND2. Ordinarily, in an exam, of course, you'd often be given either a normal distribution table or you'd be told what ND1 and ND2 are. Now, importantly here, you're calculating the area under the curve of the normal distribution, as opposed to, uh, for example, a probability, which in a continuous distribution you wouldn't be calculating. Uh, so we have to be careful with exactly what we're going to be calculating with D1 and D2. So in D1, uh, this is basically a slightly complicated formula, but it's taking the log of the stock price over the strike price. Then we add on the risk-free rate plus half multiplied by the variance multiplied by the time to maturity. Then we divide that by the standard deviation multiplied by the root of the time to maturity. D2 takes as an input D1, and then we subtract off the deviation multiplied by the root of the time to maturity. Now again in this formula, X is the option strike price, R is the annualized continuously compounded risk-free rate. So we have to be clear here, it's annualized and it's continuously compounded, hence why we're exponentiating it in the formula. T is the time to expiration in years. Uh, so, for example, if the option expires in a quarter of a year, T is going to be a quarter. And sigma here is the annualized standard deviation of the continuously compounded stock return. So, again, we have to be clear here that this is an annualized standard deviation rather than, for example, the standard deviation over a week or a month. It's an annualized standard deviation. So, in practice, applying the option pricing model here is often quite mechanical, and often it just involves inputting figures into the, into the formula to enable us to calculate a call option premium. After we've got this call option premium, when we get to the put call parity theorem, we're going to be able to calculate put option prices, and we're also going to be able to look for whether there are arbitrage opportunities. Okay, so we can go over an example where we use the Black-Scholes option pricing model. So suppose we have a stock, it's currently trading at $30 in the market, and we're looking at a call option where the strike price is 31. So currently the call option is being issued out of the money. Now the time to maturity is a quarter of a year. Our annualized standard deviation is 25%, and the annualized risk-free rate is 5.25%. So what of course we first need to do is calculate D1. So D1, as indicated before, takes as its constituents in the numerator, the log, of the stock price divided by the strike price, then we add on the risk-free rate plus half of the variance and then multiply all of that by the time to maturity. In the denominator, we have the standard deviation multiplied by the root of the time to maturity. So in this particular example, we get minus 0 0.0948. Now D2, of course, we need as well to calculate the option price. And D2 is simply D1 minus the annualized standard deviation multiplied by the square root of the time to maturity. So here it's minus, two, uh, minus 0.2198. So when we add all of this together, we can get the call price. 
So the core price, that is the price that the European core will be worth in the market, is the stock price uh, multiplied by ND1 minus, and in this second part of the equation, we have the strike price discounted back using the continuously compounded risk-free rate multiplied by ND2. So when we do this together, we end up with 30 multiplied by 0.4622, then we subtract off 31, multiplied by, uh, or rather discounted back using the continuously compounded risk-free rate, and then multiplied by ND2. And that will give us $1.23 as our price for the call option. Now, to be absolutely clear here, when we're calculating ND1 and ND2, we're going to need to do this using the normal distribution. So that is D1 and D2 are constituent components we use in order to calculate ND1 and ND2. And we do this by taking the normal distribution of these particular figures. So the Black-Scholes option pricing model enables us to calculate the premium for a European coal option. What we next might want to do is look at how do we get the premium for a European put option. Well, it turns out the Black-Scholes option pricing model is still relevant to this, but what we'll need to do is we'll need to look at the put coal parity theorem, which enables us to establish a relationship between coal options and put options. So we can price those put options and potentially identify some arbitrage opportunities if market prices don't align with the theoretical prices for these options.